what does fluid do? What does a fluid do when it's moving through something? Like when it's moving through a pipe. That this is water moving through this pipe. What are some other applications of of like a liquid or a gas flowing through something? Well, there's, you know, plumbing in your house like you would be using a pipe like this for, but then there's also like the human body and you have a heart and the heart is pumping and it needs to pump blood through arteries and veins and needs to like move your blood through your body and it comes back to your heart or maybe you need to go out to the sidewalk and use some pressure washer that's where we have this device that pumps water through a pipe and then it sprays out onto the pavement really 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 fast and that cleans the pavement you might wonder, like, in both of these cases, we're pumping a, a fluid, maybe it's blood, maybe it's water, we're pumping it through, and there's high pressures, like your heart is beating, or the pressure washer is compressing the water, and then there's, there's a velocity, too. There's how fast the blood is moving, or how fast the water is hitting the pavement, or with our, pi our pipe here, how fast the water is going through the pipe. At the start of your pipe, there is a speed there's a speed of the fluid and there's also a speed at the end like there's how fast the fluid or the water is moving when it leaves there's the speed but there's also how pressurized pressure is the water at the beginning and how what's the pressure entrance and the exit exit what is the speed of the fluid what's the pressure of the fluid and if, I, if it was my heart it'd be like well what's the pressure near my heart and what's the speed of the blood leaving that or what's the speed of the water coming out and hitting the pavement over here with the power washer um, there's a relationship between these because I'd like to know well how pressurized do I need to make it here at the start to get a velocity a, a speed of water coming out the end if this you know if this pipe goes through different turns and such so a relationship between these how are these related starts to be the question how is the speed and pressure at the start of something related to the speed and pressure at the end of something and that that is where we bring in something called uh, Bernoulli's Bernoulli's equation Bernoulli's equation ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Bernoulli's equation is um, it's an equation and I'll, I'll go through it here in a minute that relates the speed and pressure of a fluid moving through something and it's super handy for doing things like uh, like figuring out how water is going to flow or how how water is going to move but not just water it could be other fluids too okay so let's talk a little bit about it so the first thing you want to know is that it um, there let, let's I'm just going to draw a circle here this circle is all fluids fluids and flows so of all the types of fluids and all the types of ways they can be moving that's that's everything and this here this that is where Bernoulli's equation applies. It doesn't actually apply everywhere. It doesn't apply for all fluids, but it applies for a significant portion of them. And for that portion, it's really convenient to use. So first thing is, well, you might ask, well, what are, what are the conditions where it applies? Well, number one, Bernoulli's equation applies when it, the fluid is in viscid. That means that it doesn't have any viscosity. It's not sticky and it doesn't have friction losses as it moves through a pipe or moves through an artery or moves through a power washer. It's in viscid. So you could think, what kind of fluids would that be? Well, honey, that's right out. You know honey? Honey comes from the jar, but it's all sticky and gooey and it's very viscous. So that's, that's not what we're talking about. Um, are you talking about molasses? Also, that's really sticky. Doesn't apply. Um, but what are some inviscid fluids? Well, maybe 
Uh, water, for one, water's pretty good. Water actually, for for most parts, for for short distances like going through a pipe or something, water is. Uh, you can approximate it by saying it's in viscid. There's some viscosity, but it's not very much. You could also say most gases are in viscid. They a gas flows and it doesn't really have much viscosity to it. It's not sticky. You know, a gas is not like honey, right? So that's that's in viscid. Now, the other the other um, condition to be in this this part of the pie where Bernoulli's equation applies is it needs to be an incompressible an incompressible fluid. So an incompressible fluid means that when you push on it, it doesn't get smaller. Or when you when and and well, let's see here. What could I say? Incompressible fluid. Well, water, actually, water is a really great example of an incompressible fluid. I don't know, have you ever filled up a water bottle? And let's I'll draw my water bottle here. And you fill it up, and you fill it up right to the top here. And then you go and you try to screw a cap on, onto the top, but then it, it spurts out. That's because water doesn't compress. You can push on it, but it's just going to squeeze away from you. However, this gas over here, mm-mm. Gases actually are quite compressible. They, you, if you push on a gas, it gets smaller. That's like what happens when you put gas into a, a, a tire. You put it under pressure, and it actually compresses. So gases actually aren't any good for this. Inviscid and incompressible. So water is a pretty good one. Also, a lot of other liquids will qualify for this. Liquids tend to be incompressible, and as long as they're not sticky like honey or molasses, they will really they'll they'll work. So waters and liquids are pretty good at being in viscid and being incompressible. Okay, so that's what where you can use Bernoulli's equation. Now, what does Bernoulli's equation even look like? We've looked at like where it applies and everything else. Bernoulli's equation allows you to take the pressure at the entrance, and I'm going to use this one here for this entrance over here. So I'm saying this is one, one. This is point one is equal to the pressure at point two. And we're going to say this here, this here, this is point two. So first off, the pressure at point one is equal to the pressure at point two. But, and then we have to take into account the kinetic energy of the fluid, like how fast is the fluid moving. And what we do that is, the term is one half of the density. This is the density. And I'll we'll let you know this is the symbol here is rho. And we use it for equals the density of the fluid. Times the velocity squared. Now the velocity here, what we're talking about is again the velocity of the fluid at point one up here. And this this really represents the, the kinetic energy kinetic energy well the moving energy I mean actually the pressure is also part of the kinetic energy in a way but the way we like to think of kinetic like moving dynamic stuff this really applies for that and then similarly on here the other side of the equation one half rho the velocity squared at point two. Now this equation, the reason I can say point one is equal to point two like this is because Bernoulli's equation holds along a streamline. So if I were to follow any one of these lines up here, by the time I, if I follow the line, Bernoulli's equation applies to that. So I could pick any points along this whole line and I could start relating the speed to the pressure and the speed to the pressure using it. Okay, so that's what Bernoulli's equation is, and next we'll be looking at um, some examples with this and working with it, but what it allows me to do is now, if I have the pressure and the speed at point one, and I know what the pressure is at point two, I can solve now for the speed, for instance. I could solve for how fast is the water coming out. All right, so that's Bernoulli's equation. I hope you love it, and go use it.